Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Backrooms Game Lab where I'll be showing you how to import textures into the game to make the backrooms actually look like the backrooms. By the end of today's video, your game is going to look like this. But yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing that we want to do in this video is actually download the textures that we're going to be using. So to do this, I actually set up a Google Drive that has all the textures that we're going to be using in this series. So if you go over to the Google Drive link, which is in the description down below, and then go to part four, Backrooms Game Lab, and then go to part four textures. You'll see that we have a bunch of textures here, lens, dirt, roof, wall, and all kinds of stuff that we're gonna be using in this tutorial. So to download all these at the same time, we're just gonna come back out to part four, Backrooms Game Lab, and then just download the part four textures. I mean, you can do them all individually, but just to save time, I'm just gonna download the whole folder. And it should start zipping right here, when it's finished downloading, you should have something that looks like this. All we need to do for this tutorial is double click it and it should extract it. And now we have part four textures. And if you look into it, as you can see, we have all the textures that we're going to use. So if we come back over to Unity, we want to go ahead and import all of these textures into our game. So to do that, let's come over to the project window and then come over to assets. And you'll see we have an area here called materials. So if we double click this and press right click on this, we should be able to import a new asset. So click import new asset, and then let's go to downloads. And we just wanna go ahead and drag part four textures into the materials folder. So now it should start importing and it's importing all of our textures. And when it's finished, we have something called part four textures. Let's just go ahead and rename this to textures by clicking on it and then pressing return or enter and just calling it textures. So this is going to be our universal textures folder that we put all of our textures inside of. So let's go ahead and double click this and open it. You'll see now that we have all of these textures inside of here, carpet texture, lens dirt, all this stuff, and then roof texture, wall texture. So I'll get to the lens dirt later, but for now, I'm just gonna put down this carpet texture. And to put down the carpet texture onto this floor right here, all we have to do is drag carpet texture onto the floor. Now you'll see that we have a carpet on our floor. And you'll see also over here in this mesh render area that we have something, a new material has been assigned called carpet texture. So to fix this carpet texture and make it look a little bit more nice and not so like, I don't know, it looks so messed up right now. It looks big, it's kind of, it's, it's wonky. We want to change the tiling of this to make it smaller. So to do that, we want to come over to floor, come down to carpet texture material, and then go down a little bit you'll see now that there's something here called tiling. And if we change this around a little bit, you'll see that it actually changes what our floor looks like. So what we really want to do here is just kind of add more X and add more Y proportionally. So this kind of makes it look a little bit neater and have more tiling. Now you'll see it looks a lot more sharp. It looks way better. I think I'm gonna go with four X tiling and four Y tiling. And we might also want to change the smoothness or how much light is reflected off of this. So you'll see if, if we come over to surface inputs, there's something here called smoothness. Just add a little bit more and you'll see it looks like it's really wet or whatever. And add a little bit less and there's no reflection at all. So I think, uh, I think I'll just go with like a, a point, a point, let's go with 0.5, I'll go with 0.6 on the smoothness. So it kind of looks like it's reflecting. It kind of looks shiny. I like that effect for my game at least. You might want to change it around for yours and you don't have to copy everything I do for this tutorial. I'm just kind of doing a baseline of what I think looks good. But yeah, next let's do this wall texture here. And to do that, we're just gonna drag the wall texture object onto the wall. So you'll see now it, it has this uh, giant texture over it. It again does not look that good right now, but we will fix that. First thing we wanna do is fix this wall texture to make it look a little bit smaller and have more tiling. So to do that, let's first of all click on it, then come over to here where it says wall texture material, click it, an area should open up. And if we go down a little bit, you'll see we have something here called tiling. Make sure, by the way, you're not in detail inputs. You might be doing it in detail inputs and nothing is happening. If we change the tiling of deep detail inputs, nothing will happen. But if we change the tiling of surface inputs, you'll see our surface actually changes. So do not change the tiling in deep, deep detail inputs, just change the tiling in the surface inputs. So let's try going with a five by five maybe. And that does look like it's a little bit too much tiling. Let's try three by three, uh, maybe four by four. I think I think four by four might be the winner. Uh, let's see. I don't know. You can you can change it if you want to. I'm just this this is my tutorial series. Sorry, this this is my tutorial series. Do what I do what I do. 
But yeah, feel free to play around with this a lot more than I'm doing right now. This is just a tutorial, so I'm fine with it looking however I want it to look. But in your game, you should try to make it look as best as you can. So I think I'll just go with um, a four by four tiling. So now that we have this wall texture here, let's go ahead and drag this wall texture over here and also over here. And now we shouldn't really have to do this anymore because we can just copy paste the wall texture over. However, I might want to change down the smoothness a little bit. I don't know, it looks a little bit too smooth. You can really play around with these if you want to. I'm just gonna kind of get this to an area where I want it to be, um, I think like a point, point 0.3 of smoothness is enough for me. Yeah, th there, I think that's good. To do the roof, all we want to do is go to roof texture and I make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see the text. Go to roof texture, drag it to roof. So it should import, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, now we have this roof. And this one again is way too big. To fix this, all we wanna do is come down here to roof texture. It's the same thing we already have been doing. Do not go to detail inputs, come to surface inputs and change the tiling. I think three by three looks pretty good for the roof. Yeah, I think three by three looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go with three by three for my game. You can change that if you want to. But I'm gonna go by three by three. All right, so now we have some textures on these walls here. Um, there is one thing that's mixing, missing though. Uh, you'll see that these lights, they're really just round spots here. And I did do some adjustments to my post-processing and I'll show them on the screen here for a second. I did change the intensity of this bloom. I changed the vignette. I also changed the film grain, the tone mapping. If you wanna copy these over, you can copy these over to your post-processing. I just did this to make my lights look a little bit better but it still doesn't fix the fact that they're circles and we want fluorescent square lights that fill these tiles. Now to do this, it's actually really simple. We're just gonna go ahead to this floor here. Actually, let's go to the roof here. And we wanna duplicate this by pressing Command or Control D. And now we'll see we have a duplicate floor. Let's first of all rename this to Lights. And now we want to go ahead and change the size of this. So I'm gonna be using this proportional version of the size changer and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller try to make it like a square and I'll drag it down a little bit just like this yeah I think that's pretty good for now and we also want this thing to glow so to do that we're actually gonna make a different material so to make a new material to make this light glow we want to come to this materials right here and then go to the materials folder inside of the materials folder and this is where all of our materials that we've made for these, for this roof, this wall, and all everything have gone. So we just want to go ahead and right click this, press create, and create a new material. Let's name this light. Now if we go ahead and drag this new material onto this, uh, this like fluorescent light thing right here, we can see that we have a new area down here called light material. If we click this, come down a little bit, you'll see we have all the same stuff that we had for our walls, our roof, and the ground. Mm -hmm. So we want this to glow, and to make it glow, we want to come down to Emission, turn it on, and then change this color from black to white. We also want to change the intensity and make it a little bit brighter. Just like, I think five is enough brightness. So now, as you can see, it glows in the dark, but we also want to turn off, uh, where is it? We want, we want to come up to mesh renderer, come to lighting, turn off cast shadows. So now it can't cast any shadows. Next, we wanna go ahead and drag one of our lights over to this light to make it actually bright. So I'm gonna drag this over here and I'll drag it a little bit over here. So as you can see now, our light kind of glows and it's, it takes a, a shape of a square. And if we turn this off, you'll see that our light kind of looks like a square. So now, most importantly, we wanna make sure that wherever this square goes, our light that glows follows. So to do this, just go ahead and click this, and you'll see this is selected in the hierarchy. We'll drag point light over to the object that we named light. And now light is the parent object, and wherever we drag the square, we drag the point light. I'm also gonna rename point light to um, light emission since that's actually what makes it glow. The last thing we wanna do is make our square actually the size of one of these tiles. And to do that, I'm gonna come over here to the Rect tool, and I just wanna drag it, make it a little bit bigger, make it kind of fit the tile of the roof. 
and now it as you'll see it does fit the tile and it looks it looks like it was it's a part of the uh, texture i might i might make this a little bit more this way just because i'm kind of picky and yeah i think that looks i think that looks good so now we have a fluorescent light and we do want to fix this one too just by deleting this and clicking this one right here we can duplicate it by pressing command d or control d and then we can just drag it over here i'm just going to drag it over here and try to fit it into one of these existing tiles right here so yeah i think i'll just put it in um i'll put it in this one right here yeah i think that looks good so now we have two fluorescent lights and they do look they really do look like fluorescent lights but there is a problem they don't look like they're glowing very much do they so this is why one of the textures that i gave us was a thing called a uh, lens dirt i believe so let's actually put this on our post processing to make our camera have a type of glow effect when they're looking at the light so to do this let's go to materials go into the textures and you'll see we have a few things called lens dirt now you can choose which one of these you want to use but i'm just going to be using lens dirt 01. now that we're in the textures folder let's go to post process volume and come to bloom you'll see that we have this thing here called lens dirt. So if you go ahead and turn both of these on, you'll see it requires a dirt texture. So if you go ahead and drag one of these dirt textures over to the, this area right here, uh, you'll see, yeah, we have, a, we have a type of dirt on our screen. And we also wanna turn up the dirt intensity a little bit. I turned mine to, I'm gonna turn mine to 130, so I think that's pretty good. And when we look at the lights, you'll see that we have this, this type of dirt on our screen now, which wouldn't have been on originally, if we didn't have the lens dirt. So yeah, that kind of makes our cameras look like it's glowing a little bit and it really makes the lights stand out as actual fluorescent lights. So I think that looks really good. So the last thing I'm gonna be doing in this video is actually making our walls look more detailed and I'm also gonna add in pillars to the back rooms. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and click both of these walls here and I'm gonna come over here to the hierarchy window, right click it and press delete. Now we just have one wall and when we make changes to this wall, I'm just gonna duplicate it to the other ones because I feel like it would take too long to make all the changes to each wall individually. Let's go ahead and duplicate this wall and I'm gonna rename this to base. Now, if we go ahead and drag base into wall, we can kind of make this look a lot like a, a floor base for these walls here. So let's drag it out a little bit and then let's drag it down. And if we click off of it, you'll see that we kind of have this base effect going on here. So it doesn't matter what exactly is happening down here. It might be going through the ground, but it doesn't matter because our player is never gonna see it. So let's go ahead and drag this up a little bit and you'll see that it looks more like a base. I'm also gonna go ahead and click this, duplicate it again and drag it up. You'll see now that we have a type of effect going on here that looks like the original picture of the back rooms how it had a like a type of strip here that was missing. I'm gonna drag this out a little bit more though, just because I think it's missing that kind of detail to it. And now, yeah, I think this looks like a complete wall that we need for the back rooms. So let's go ahead and duplicate this wall here. And we wanna come to the Z here. I'm just gonna make this to Z equals zero because I think that rotates it perfectly for me. It might be different for you, but for me, it's just Z equals zero. And I want to drag this over here back to the spot that it was originally at. Now, if we drag it forward a little bit, it kind of fits in to the spot that it originally was at. However, um, it's not actually rotated right, so I'm just gonna do it manually. If you click this, hold Command or Control, you'll see that it's on a grid. And if we just drag it over here, it's facing the right way and we have the detail on this side. So I'm gonna duplicate this wall again drag it forward and then I want it to be facing behind itself so I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here like this and now it's facing the right way. Mm -hmm. So now we have three walls here that all look pretty good and they're all facing the right ways. I'm going to add a fourth wall for now by just clicking this one right here, this wall, duplicating it, dragging it forward and then rotating it once again this way and then we can move it a little bit back this way. And now we kind of have a room going on here. I'm also gonna just drag this a little bit forward this way, just because later on we might put a pathway here. But yeah, 
This is a pretty good area that we have going on here. All right, so now that our room is looking like this, the last detail that I want to add in this video is a pillar. And to make a pillar, I'm just gonna click one of these walls and duplicate them. And I'm gonna delete all the bases inside of this wall. I'm gonna drag this to the center of the room and make it smaller by coming to the scale tool and dragging it on this red area and then dragging it on the green. Now we kind of have a square going on here and to just make sure it's a square, you can always come here and change it to 0.4 manually and 0.4 here manually. Now it's just completely equal on both sides. There's a problem though, and you'll see that our tiling is super mushed together. To fix this, all we want to do is click it, come to wall texture, right click the wall texture and press create variant for shader. Now if we click this variant and come down, you'll see that we have tiling set at four. Now, because we made a variant, Changing the tiling of this won't change the tiling of the other walls. So all we want to do is change the X tiling to, let's say, 0.2, which I think looks pretty good for this game. And that fixes it for that side. But if we come over to the other side, you'll see that our tiling is the exact same. To fix this, first of all, I'm going to come over and rename this to Pillar. Let's go ahead and duplicate Pillar. And we want to go ahead and change the Y rotation, something like that. We want to expand it ever so slightly and contract it ever so slightly on the red side and now you'll see that we have a pillar effect going on here i'm going to drag pillar into pillar so now this is a parent object of the pillar with a one next to it now you'll see that we have a pillar and all sides of the pillar have good tiling and none of them are like weirdly mushed together or anything if you want you could add bases to the pillar and to add bases, it's really simple. You just go ahead and duplicate it, change this this like square one a little bit in the very center. That makes it bigger on all sides. And then just drag it down. Now you'll see that we kind of have a base going on here. It's, it can be kind of smaller like that. And then, uh, yeah, I just want to also duplicate this again. I want to rename this to pillar base, pillar base and then duplicate it one last time, drag it to the top for the final time in this tutorial series, and drag it a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher maybe. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now we have a pillar that has a base on the top and the bottom. And if, oh yeah, we wanna make sure first of all that we drag both of these into the pillar object. Now let's go ahead and save our game by pressing Command S or Control S and you'll see that the star right here will go away, mm -hmm. meaning that we've saved our game. So that's all for this part of the tutorial series where I showed you how to add a pillar to the room. I showed you how to make the lights square and also add a cool detail to the camera. So whenever you look at a light, it kind of adds this detail to it. In the next part, we'll be showing how to make flickering lights that kind of look like this and are flickering inside of the back rooms. I'll also be showing how to add sounds and fluorescent light bulb sounds, which are so iconic in the back rooms. You can't have the back rooms without adding more fluorescent light bulb sounds. I encourage you to expand on this area of the back rooms a little bit in between this video and the next video so that you can make this area look bigger, add more hallways and stuff. However, in the next video, I will just be adding more hallways anyway. So yeah, you can wait for the next video to add more hallways, or you can just do it in between this video and the next video. But yeah, I've been Developer Jake, and we will see you in the next one.